Hello everyone. In this quick video, I want to talk a little bit about mineral hardness. Mineral hardness is a unique property that lets us know how a mineral resists scratching. One of the reasons why we often refer to as gems as precious stones is because they're typically very hard and they resist scratching. What makes a gem a gem is that it is very hard and you can wear it on a ring, you can wear it on a necklace, it won't get marred, it won't get scratched up, and it looks nice for a long period of time. It maintains its vitreous and, and adamantine luster and it looks really beautiful because it doesn't get scratched or marred. So what makes a mineral hard? That has to do with how the atoms are bound within the crystal structure. And certain minerals have a greater hardness and certain minerals less. Friedrich Mohs developed a scale of mineral hardness, and it's a scale of 1 to 10, and I'm sure you're familiar with some of these things. The softest mineral is talc, followed by gypsum, then calcite, fluorite, then apatite, feldspar, quartz, number 7, is a fairly hard mineral. And then we get to the very hard ones of topaz and corundum, which is also sapphires and rubies and of course diamonds. Now you may wonder why I don't have a whole bunch of diamonds sitting here. Well, for obvious reasons. Actually, I do have a bunch of diamonds here. This is a collection of diamonds that I got at the Home Improvement Store. And there are thousands upon thousands of diamonds on the edge of this saw blade. This is useful for cutting stone or concrete. And they're tiny micro diamonds, which of course are very, very hard. And they'll cut through other rocks because they are so resistant to scratching. But if I want to test the hardness, I can use a set of these minerals, or I have some common items that have known hardness. There are things like the streak plate, which mineralogists and geologists use to identify the streak of a mineral. This has a hardness of six and a half. A piece of glass. Glass has a hardness typically of around five and a half. A steel nail has a hardness of about four and a half. A penny, copper penny, has a hardness of three and a half. And of course, another really common thing is my fingernails. Fingernails, as long as they don't have other things added onto them, have a hardness of about two and a half. So I can pick up an object, such as this gypsum, and I can rub my fingernail against it and very easily and clearly make a scratch. That curved scratch is because my fingernail at two and a half is harder than the gypsum at a level two. And so by just testing things, I can pick up a mineral and very quickly rub my fingernail against it. And if it's easily scratched, I know it's a very soft mineral. Now, if I'm going to go about testing other minerals, actually, I'm probably going to be looking for the streak at the same time. So one of the first things I might do is take the mineral and do a streak test. So let's talk about this mineral right here. I rub it on the streak plate and I can see I've got this nice dark blackish greenish streak. Well that tells me two things. It tells me number one the color of the streak. I know this mineral has a black or blackish green streak but I also know because it crushed up the mineral that it has a hardness less than the streak plate. So it has a hardness less than 6.5. The next thing I'll do is I'll take the glass Putting the glass down on a hard surface, I'll rub the mineral against the glass. Nothing happens. It doesn't scratch at all. That tells me that the mineral is softer than the glass. The next, I could possibly take the nail and try and scratch it. Or I could even go down to the penny, which has a hardness of three and a half. And if I rub this mineral against the back of the penny, we can see that I've got a few nice shiny scratch marks. Now that tells me that this mineral is harder than the penny. So this mineral has a hardness greater than three and a half, but less than glass. Usually I figure if I can get within two points on the hardness scale, I'm doing pretty good. But let's go ahead and try the nail. I can either take the mineral and scratch against the side of the nail, or I can take the nail and scratch the mineral. In this case, I am getting a scratch of the mineral of the nail on the mineral. That tells me this is softer than the nail, but harder than the penny. So the hardness of this mineral must be somewhere in the vicinity of four. Harder than the penny at three and a half, softer than the nail at four and a half. 
Let's try this again. Here's a mineral my son picked up in Colorado up in the mountains. If I approach the streak plate, uh, don't see anything. Let's try the black streak plate. And if I rub it on the black streak plate, oh, you can see I've got a little bit of a white streak right there. So it's probably softer than the streak plate if I'm getting a streak. But if I take it to the glass and I rub it against the glass, you can see that maybe it's a little hard to tell, but there's a couple little scratch lines along this glass that tells me the rock is harder than the glass, softer than the street plate. That must put this somewhere in the neighborhood of a six because the street plate six and a half, the glass is five and a half. Let's try another one. Here's a rather unique shiny metallic mineral. Again, I'm going to take it to the street plate and rub it on the street plate. Get a nice rich black streak. So it's softer than the street plate. Take it to the glass. Nothing happens. You can use the nail. The nail easily makes a mark on it. So I still know that it, the nail is the harder object, the glass is the harder object, the street plate is the harder object. If I come to the penny, I rub it on the, a clean spot on the penny, uh, just seeing a little bit of black smearing, so it must be softer than the penny. I can take it against my fingernail, and very clearly I get a little scratch mark on my fingernail, so that means the mineral is harder than my nail at two and a half, but softer than the penny at three and a half. Again, that puts this mineral somewhere in the vicinity of a hardness of three. One more comment about testing mineral hardness, something like this. Here's a really unique dodecahedral mineral. That's a 12-sided mineral that I picked up out in the mountains of North Carolina. And take it to the street plate. Uh, don't see anything. Let's take it to the uh, dark colored street plate and rub it and I see a line across the street plate, but if I try and dust it off, that line remains. That tells me I've actually scratched the street plate. So how do I know what color mineral, what color streak this has? Well, right now I don't know the answer to that because I've scratched the street plate, not streaked it against the scratch plate. And so another opportunity would be to take it against a harder object, such as the quartz, or even, the quartz is now sliding down, or I could take the topaz, and this really beautiful little topaz crystal is quite hard. And if I use this against this mineral, well, I can see a little bit of a scratch. So this mineral must be softer than the topaz. The other thing, if I really wanted to find out what color streak this mineral had, I could rub it on something like a harder substance in the street plate. So if I rub the mineral against the corundum, I can see that there is a bit of a white streak, and that tells me the color of the streak, and also it tells me that it is softer than this particular mineral. So there's a lot of similarities in the test for streak and the test for hardness. What we're doing is we're rubbing one thing on another. If it leaves a powdery residue, we know that's a streak. If it leaves a scratch, we know that that mineral is harder than the object that it's being rubbed against. And so the idea is we're comparing to see which one streaks and which one scratches, and that gives us an idea of the color of the powdered streak as well as the hardness of the mineral. Hope this helps out as you go about testing minerals and identifying minerals.